Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Plumas, Manitoba, a congregation of Lutheran Church Canada. Here is our pastor with Sunday's homily. Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts and your believing. Amen. At no other time in the liturgical calendar are three psalms sequentially chosen to be prayed in the divine service at any other time than Easter Sunday. Psalms 66, 67, and 68 historically form a unit in their usage on Easter Sunday. And also these three psalms are prayed throughout the week of Easter. Our appointed psalm from the one-year lectionary series is placed right in the middle of these two psalms, and for good reason. First, Psalm 66 is a psalm of praise. It remembers the awesome work of God when he delivered Israel from the house of bondage and slavery in Egypt and brought them to the promised land in the Exodus. That foreshadows the New Testament church being perfected through Jesus' Exodus when he died on the cross for the sin of the world, was buried in the grave, and he rose again from the dead to conquer death and ascended into heaven. Our appointed psalm, Psalm 67, is also a psalm of praise and declares the way of God's salvation for all peoples of all nations throughout the entire earth. Not just for Israel, but for all the Gentiles. And thirdly, Psalm 68 begins with the words, God shall arise. And indeed, our eternal God, Jesus, arose from the dead, conquering death by death in his resurrection from the dead. And he's done this for you, for me, and for all peoples and all nations of the earth. Psalm 67 has another significant historical use. In the 6th century, the Western Church under St. Benedict appointed Psalm 67 to be prayed at the break of dawn every morning in the service of matins. The idea was this. As the sunlight was breaking through the darkness in the eastern horizon and extended its ever-reaching rays into all the lands of the west, so the Church of Jesus Christ would pray Psalm 67 in order to call all nations, all peoples of the earth, to praise God to be merciful, to praise God to bless, to praise God to make his face shine upon all peoples, so that his way of salvation may be known among all nations just as the rays of the sunlight go throughout the entire earth. And notice the opening verses of Psalm 67. God be merciful to us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. These words of Psalm 67 are almost an identical quote to the Aaronic benediction recorded in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. Although the words are not in the same order, the prayer of Psalm 67 echoes the blessing that the priest Aaron and his sons after him would speak to the people of God so as to bless the people of God. First, Psalm 67 asks God to be merciful. We ask God to be compassionate to the sinner who should really be condemned for his or her sin, but they will not be condemned because of God's steadfast love, mercy, grace, and compassion shown in the death and resurrection of Jesus applied to sinners in order to release them, redeem them from their sin and death. Secondly, Psalm 67 
prays for God to bless the people of God, to give them the ability to have success, not just in this life, but also in the life of the world to come. And thirdly, we pray that God's face would shine upon us. Notice that this phrase is, again, almost identical to the blessing that Aaron the priest would bless the people of God. It's in the benediction at the close of the divine service. But this phrase is also highlighted in the Old Testament lesson in Exodus chapter 33, verse 20. The Lord warned Moses that no one could see the full divine face and glory of God and live. Hence, we pray in Psalm 67 that the face of God would shine upon us. When the one eternal God sets his face against his enemies, they are destroyed, they are put to death, they are put to flight. But in the prayer of Psalm 67, we ask the face of God to shine and beam with the brightness of his blessing, love, compassion, mercy, and grace, so that all people are not hurt or harmed. And the prayer of the very first verse in Psalm 67 is answered in the word of God. In the very announcement of the blessing, the benediction, at the end of the divine service. The benediction is not some kind of hopeful wish that God would be gracious and merciful to you, to bless you and make his face to shine upon you, but rather it is his blessing of grace and favor for you. The very words of the blessing give you exactly what they say they will give you. It gives you God's grace. It gives you God's blessing. It gives you God's favor. And we pray Psalm 67 in solidarity with those who prayed it before us in the morning of every sunrise, all for the sake of making God's way known on the earth and his saving power among all nations. God has revealed the way of his saving power in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes unto the Father except through Jesus. There is no other way than God's revealed way of Jesus' death on the cross for our sins and his resurrection from the light, death for our eternal life. So in one sense, we can categorically declare that the one way of salvation is exclusive in and through Jesus Christ, for there is no other name given under heaven and earth by which we must be saved. But on the other hand, we pray in Psalm 67 that this one exclusive, eternal, only way of salvation in and through Jesus would be made known to all the earth among all nations. In this way, pardon the pun, God's eternal salvation in and through Jesus Christ and him alone is inclusive. That is, it's for all nations, all peoples of all times and of all places. So when we pray Psalm 67, we are asking the one eternal God to make his one eternal way of salvation through Jesus' death and resurrection known. And how is God's way of salvation known? It's by faith in everything that Jesus accomplished for us and our salvation. It's in the very fact that he willingly was conceived by God the Holy Spirit in the virgin's womb and born of the Virgin Mary. It's in the fact that Jesus lived a holy and righteous life for us, that he died our death on the cross to forgive all our sins and rebellion against God and his word and commandments, especially for all those times we have not made his way of salvation known to those who need it. And also we have faith in his glorious resurrection from the dead for our eternal life. His resurrection from the dead opens the way of salvation to you and all who believe in him. 
It is very clear in both the Old and New Testaments that God's way of salvation is for all peoples. And that God does not want anyone to be damned. On behalf of the Lord God, the prophet Ezekiel asks and answers, quote, Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his ways and live? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. St. Paul the Apostle reminds his spiritual son, Timothy, in his first letter, chapter 2, verse 4, our Savior, Jesus, desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. St. Peter the Apostle says, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that anyone should perish, but that all should reach repentance. It is very clear that the one and only way of God's salvation is for all peoples and all nations. But sadly, all peoples will not come into this salvation since they do not reach repentance. They do not turn from their sin and rebellion against God and his word. They do not have faith in the promise of Jesus to forgive their sin and bring them to everlasting life through his death and resurrection. They willingly resist the will of God to save them through the one eternal way of Jesus' death and resurrection, and thus they have created their own eternal condition by their willful ignorance and resistance to God's power to save. So before the appearing of Jesus the Messiah, Israel was to be a light to the nations to all the peoples of the earth, so that all peoples of the earth could receive God's way of salvation by faith in the appearing of Jesus the Messiah. Through the prophet Isaiah, God declares his promise to Israel. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations. Seven chapters later, chapter 49, verse 6, Isaiah again says, I will make you as a light for the nations, that my, the Lord's salvation, may reach to the end of the earth. And sadly, Israel, like ourselves, did not always make known God's way of eternal salvation to the nations. In fact, when the Messiah Jesus appeared and his way of salvation was accomplished in his death and resurrection from the dead, many rejected Jesus and his way of salvation. And some Israelites, Orthodox Jews, are still waiting for the appearing of the Messiah Jesus. And when Jesus comes a second time in all his power and glory, those who are still waiting for the appearing of the Messiah should ask the Messiah, have you been here before? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Yes, Jesus has been here before. Jesus first appeared in humiliation by the way of the Virgin Mary when he was conceived in her virgin womb and when she gave birth to him at Christmas. Jesus appeared in order to redeem us under the law by fulfilling the law for us in our stead. And then he died on the cross for all those times we have rebelled against God and his word, for all those times we have not made known his salvation to all peoples of the earth so that they might know his mercy, grace, compassion, and love and forgiveness and consequently eternal life in his resurrection from the dead. We praise God with all the peoples of the earth for God's way of salvation in and through Jesus' death and resurrection. 
And by receiving his way of salvation through Jesus our Savior, we make known that way of salvation to all peoples of the earth. The word of God has been fulfilled in your hearing. And we, like St. Simeon, who we meet during the days of Christmas, can depart in peace. For we have intimately seen, heard, smelled, tasted, and touched God's salvation in his word and sacraments. The word of God and the sacraments of God are the vehicles, the tools in which God makes known his way of eternal salvation for you and all peoples of the earth. This is the eternal light for revelation to the nations and the glory of God's people Israel. We receive God's way of salvation when we hear God's eternal word spoken, when we read it and believe it. We receive God's eternal way of salvation when we're baptized into Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for eternal life. We receive God's eternal way of salvation when we come to the table of the Lord and receive the very body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you for your word and for your sacraments. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.